joy, peace, tranquility, vibrancy, and wellness. Isn't this what you want instead of constant stress? That's what host Rochelle Lawson is going to help you with on Blissful Living. There are many ways to reduce stress, some you may not even know about. Doesn't a little peace and tranquility sound like just what you've been looking for? Relax for a few minutes with Rochelle. She's the queen of feeling fabulous. Hello, everyone, and blissful living. I am Rochelle Marie Lawson, the queen of feeling fabulous and the wellness architect. And I want to thank today's sponsor of the show, first of all, before we get started, Health Healing Wellness Company. You can check them out at healthhealingwellness.com. They have some wonderful, wonderful modalities to help you optimize your health and well-being, increase your energy, sleep better, feel better, basically to look fabulous, fit, and well. So you want to check them out at healthhealingwellness.com. Next, I want to thank all of you for tuning in to today's show. I guarantee that you're going to learn something that you can use immediately after today's show. Please feel free to share this show with all that you love and care about. Also, feel free to come back at any time to listen to any part of the show that you may have missed or you just want to listen again to see if you were able to get the full message or the full information from the guest that's on the show. And lastly, I want to thank the people behind the scenes that helped me to look and sound and feel fabulous over the airwaves. That's my producer's. In the background, Wendy and Ed, thank you, thank you, thank you for all that you do for Blissful Living uh, so that we can bring phenomenal information from our phenomenal guests to all of you out there listening. Now, today's guest is, of course, you know all my guests are special, but today's guest is named Greg Freeman, and I just want to tell you a little bit about Greg. He has studied and done ceremonies with Peruvian shamans, Aborigine elders, and elders from various Native American tribes, including the Yaqui, the Deer tribe, the Lakota, and the Abenaki. Greg has taken people deeper up the, I think it's called Ukiley River, a tributary of the Amazon to work with Carlitos, a ship Bo shaman Ebo. in the rainforest, <laughs> and to Machu Picchu to hear Kuchel tell stories that the anthropologists don't. Now, if that doesn't already sound intriguing to you, listen to this. In Australia, he took people to the Uluru to hear Elsie and, oh my gosh, these words, and <laughs> Anna. <laughs> I'm a good Aborigine elder, tell the creation stories, and into tropical Dan Tree rainforest to experience the Aborigine healings done by the Kuku Yalanji tribe through the, oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> the bottom line is I've taken people all over the world to work with some amazing, insightful, raw, authentic indigenous elders. There the you go. I couldn't. I couldn't have summed it up any better. And so there you have it. He, he popped in to help a sister out. And we have our <laughs> wonderful guest, Greg Freeman. He must be connected deeply to the the spiritual aspects of the Aborigine elders and those that are so much more wiser because he knew right when to chime in and help a girl out. And I so appreciate that. And so, hey, welcome to the show, Greg. How are such you? Such a pleasure and an honor to be here. Thank you very much for having me on. I can tell we're already going to have, you guys, one of those phenomenally fantastic shows because, you know, I kind of roll on the fabulous, the fabulous note there. And so um, with Greg, I can already tell we're going to have to probably be toned down a bit just, well, Heck, it's my show. We can do whatever we want to do, so we don't have to tone it down. It's just make it more fun and intriguing for you guys out there listening. This is a perfect opportunity to grab a piece of paper, something to write back, write with, sit back and relax, maybe in your favorite comfortable, cozy chair. If you are on the East Coast, this might be a great time for you because I know that tropical storm, a.k.a. hurricane, 
Joaquin is getting ready to barrel down on you guys. So why not sit back, relax with your favorite hot beverage, a piece of paper, something to write with, and tune in to this phenomenal show that me and Greg are about to bring you. And we're going to call this show The Inner Journey with Greg Freeman. Now, let's dive into um, some more aspects about Greg that I want to share with you. Now, you know, Greg is, is a very popular He's a very popular guy. He's internationally came interviewer who focused on featuring people living with intentions from their place of passion, sharing experiences, skills, and insights. And through on-air, FM, Internet, and social media-based reach, his program, Inner Journey, which is what we're going to be talking about today, has a weekly live audience of 100,000-plus, principally women ages between the 25 and 45, and gee, I wonder why. And they wonder why women are so much more connected and spiritually in tune than some of you fellas. And he has a weekly Facebook post reach of, check this out, you guys, between a quarter of a million to a half a million people. Now, do I bring it or what? His (laughs) guests and clients come from diverse paths of life, including spirituality, 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 arts, music, wellness, healing, sports, business, academics, and pop culture. Some of his past guests have included Don Miguel Ruiz, Jr., who we all absolutely know and love, James Von Prague, Panache Desai, Lynn Andrews, and one of my favorite, favorite, favorites who told me that it was okay to connect and seek and communicate with angels the awesome, magnificent Doreen Virtue herself. So when I tell you I bring some phenomenal guests to you, guess what? I don't lie. I bring some phenomenal guests, and Greg is living proof of that. So with all of that, I would just like to say welcome to the show, Greg. How are you doing? That is the single most amazing intro I've ever gotten. Thank you for that. (laughs) Now you know you don't have to like yank my chain on that. You know that, right? It's it's it, it, you oh, are darling, great. I'm just... telling you, girl. There has been nobody that's even come close to laying it all out like that for me. Thank you. <laughs> oh, you're very welcome. I can tell we're gonna have a ball. It's it's great great to have you, and um, I just appreciate um, people like you here on Earth that you know you you do these special things and you have this reach that's absolutely phenomenal. And yet sometimes even though you're doing all these wonderful things and you're connected with all these wonderful people, there are still people out in the world that don't know about you. And so this is one of the avenues that I think people like us who are on this planet and are trying to live our purpose to help everyone have a much better, fulfilling, purposeful life. Um, I think it's this opportunity for us to just, you know, connect with those that may not have the avenues or even know about about you, and I just kind of want to jump in because I'm really intrigued. I've always been intrigued about the Aborigine and the elders and the wisdom that, quote, unquote, is not necessarily in textbooks that we can get, but is in their minds and the and the beholdings of the brain of all these very wise individuals here on earth that, you know, like I said, a lot of them are not even connected to to us in a um, way that we are connected with everyone around the world in today's today's society. With regards to um, all of the stuff you did, you've done so far, particularly with um, the shamans and the Aborigine elders and the elders of the Native American tribes, can you tell us how you how you took that journey or how you discovered to take that journey that that led you to these phenomenal people? You know, I I wish I could say that there was some very conscious thought that said, okay, now it's time to go work with indigenous elders. But instead, the truth is that in one form or another, this has always been my path. This has always been my passion. This has always been the thing that I've been drawn to. And the synchronicity of life allowed things to unfold in such a manner that I got to work with doing sweat lodges and Native American tribes, and then that led me to other indigenous elders and Peruvian shaman that I studied under and studied with, and so many other people. So to 
for me to say it began here and to mark a place on some kind of chronological map just doesn't exist because I came into this world doing this, loving this, wanting this, living this. Now, were you were you exposed to these type of – where did you grow up? I grew up on the West Coast. I was born back east, but but I grew up out here in California. And was I exposed to any, you know, did I grow up in a family that said, hey, let's go do ceremony, let's go do ritual? No. I grew up being the only altar boy I know named Friedman and brought up very <laughs> Roman Catholic, and but then went and found my own path because that way had things to offer, but it just wasn't singing to me in the way that other teachings did. I can understand that um, being uh, brought up Roman Catholic and uh, actually going into some other, going, experiencing, I should say, not by my choice, but experiencing other uh, religious sects as well as I grew up and then reading uh, as a lector and being involved in the Roman Catholic Church for 17 years. Um, and I, I, too, can relate to there was just something missing I got the information, it resonated with me in certain aspects, but there were whole big pieces and chunks that just were missing for me and just didn't fit for me, and this led me to kind of the path like you, not exactly like yours, but different. And so it's really interesting uh, how as Catholics, I would like to say we evolve, you know, um, and become so much wiser beyond the scope of what, a religious sect, um, I, you know, I dictates. I've got to tell you so that I've seen a lot of people that are on a air quotation marks spiritual path or a new age path, and they came from specific dogmas, whether that's Catholic or Christian or Baptist or Jewish or whatever it happens to be. And what they tend to do is say, hey, don't bash me for being on my path. At the same time, that they're bashing whatever dogma they came from. My feeling right. is there's a million different, there's an infinite number of different ways to get to any place that you want to go to. So why would we possibly denigrate, put down, or discount somebody else's path? If it works for you, that's groovy. And if it doesn't, that's okay. Find another way. But my way is what's working for me. I agree totally. I, you know, I, I totally agree. And, and so much in the media today we hear about, you know, uh, various sects, you know, just, I want to say, strong-arming their message. And, you know, okay, that's nice to bring that enlightenment that you experience to the world. But your enlightenment, like you said, is not everyone's enlightenment. Just like we're two two people on a path to um, living better as humans and, you know, becoming wiser and more spiritually connected in our own in our own unique way, we're actually two people traveling on our own unique path. It's almost like being on the freeway and I'm in lane one and you're in lane two, and we may be headed the same direction, but I may come across speed bumps on my lane and you may be come, have to go through or around a tree. It It doesn't it doesn't matter what we're doing. It just matters that we're on our journey, on our path, and fulfilling our path because everyone's journey is different. And and I love that. And I love hearing about, you know, these wise elders and these wise people um, that live here on planet Earth because they truly believe that and they don't get wrapped up in one particular religious dogma, so to speak, and thinking that's the right one and it's the only way and all of that. So I, I love, love, love that. I am so intrigued about this stuff. Uh, I have so many questions popping up in my head. And um, and so tell me, with regards to the Peruvian shamans, first of all, if you can just give a definition for those out there listening that may be involved in their particular religious sect or dogma, so to speak, and don't really know what a shaman is or may have mis preconceived notions about what a shaman is. Could you just enlighten those individuals that may be listening as to what a shaman really is? Well, I can tell you what my understanding is, and that's about as, you know, and everybody's going to have to have their own interpretation. First of all, let me start with 
my own little rant and rave. There, are, It's such a hip, in vogue word right now, shaman. Everybody and their cousin is saying that they're a shaman. 90% of them, more than 90% of them, aren't. And a shaman is somebody that's had the medicine passed down to them through ancestors, through generations, through teachings, through um, internship, through studying under somebody for years and years and years. And medicine could mean literally working with plant life and medicine. It could also mean along the lines of just the teachings, because the teachings, the verbal stories, the things that we have to share are as much medicine, as much love as anything that's plant life. That's the first thing. The second thing is, my understanding of what a shaman is, is best defined in two different ways. One is a wounded healer. Mm. Because what happens is, so many people along this path will put, that call themselves shamans, will put themselves in this position of being on a pedestal. That separates. But instead, Mm. a true shaman understands that he is wounded as well. He is in process as well. He is no greater than. He just brings different things to the table that you may not. And maybe you will as well. So a wounded healer, somebody in process, in path, that maybe can walk beside you for a time. And the other (laughs) definition that I have is a bridge. That what they're going to do is they're going to provide a methodology, a path, a light for you to get from one side of the river to the other. Let me help you cross. That's all. And crossing could mean everything into health, into death, into birth, the entire cycle of life. Did that help you? Yeah, no, that's great. I mean, I have several. And and, and it's funny when you say that, you know, all these a lot of people calling themselves shamans, and they're really not. Uh, of the true, I don't want to discount anybody or hurt anybody's feeling, but really not of the true meaning of what how you explain what a shaman is. Um, I always believed, and I don't know where I got this from, and it's something I've probably picked up or heard when I was a kid. I have no idea or it should have been divinely ingrained in me for some reason, but I always believed, like you, that a shaman was somebody that was was gifted, and I want to kind of say like the Dalai Lama or something. It's a divine gift, and it's passed on, um, you know, from wise elders through the generation to a predetermined individual that had this this enlightenment, this, this this evolution, so to speak, that is beyond, like, me or you or someone else and, and truly this unique, very special person. And so that's what I always thought a shaman was. Now, I have no idea where I got that and where, why I believe that. And then, lo and behold, you know, I grow up and, um, you know, started doing my own spiritual transformation and enlightenment, so to speak, and, you know, out speaking in the world, bringing my message of, you know, healing and being healthy and well holistically and naturally and I've come across several not several many many people that um call themselves shaman and they've gone to shaman training or you know I don't want to discount it or say make it sound negative but you know they've gone and they've become shaman so to speak through this very intense training process and I just I was like well gee you know that kind of blows my uh you know, what I believe or what I perceive to believe, in my belief was was about a shaman. And, and you now I have people that you can go, you know, you can go get trained to be a shaman if you go through and make the, the ceremonial rituals and all of that. And so just by hearing you explain what it is kind of fortifies what I truly believe the shaman to be. And not discounting any of you out there that are shamans, so to speak. It's just I just had a different perception, and I, I it doesn't seem like I'm too far off. But I believe that everyone has a gift, and whether you're ingrained in divinely united or connected to be that shaman, or you went and got training, um, whatever your gift is, it's something that the world needs, and now it's the time for it. And so thus, 
um, I want all of you to bring out your goodness and positive energy for the world so we can just make it just a much better place. Now, okay, with regards to the Aborigine people. The well, wait, Aborigine before you even get to that, I just want to say yes. I agree with you. What I heard you say was very magnanimous in saying, hey, whatever you choose to call yourself is on you, and you can support that and respect that, but that doesn't mean that you have to agree with it. And that's gorgeous. I appreciate that immensely. Thank you. I mean, it's kind of like, you know, when the Pope says stuff, and because we're both raised Catholic, you know, it's like kind of like when the Pope says stuff. You kind of like, you you listen, you take it in. It may or may not resonate with you. You may or may not believe it, or it may not may or fit for your life, but you respect what he has to say. You know what I'm saying? And it's the same thing. You know, we all have these wonderful gifts, and my gift is different than your gift, and, and our gifts collectively are different than other people's gifts. But as long as we're putting out positive energy and I think, um, you know, positivity, eventually it's going to help transform all this negative energy and negative negativity that we have in the world. And um, it may take a little bit of time, but when it does, it's going to catapult, and then we'll just have this wonderful, wonderful place. We'll have a heaven really here on earth that we can all live and enjoy and There'll be no hunger. There'll be no poverty. There'll be no homeless. There'll be, you know, this this is rich, loving, um, beautiful, beautiful society. But we just have not, as humans living here on Earth, evolved to that point yet. And I know it'll happen because of people like me and you. But um, we need all of you guys out there listening as well to hone in into your positive energy and start displaying that out in the world. And and you never know what a little bit may do to help change all this negative stuff that we have happening. Now, let's get to the Aborigines because I um, have always been intrigued. I'm just like a little kid talking to you today. (laughs) I have always been (laughs) like, wow, I haven't felt this way in a long time. I have always been intrigued by Aborigine people. Um, I used to work for an airline um, when I was a youngin', I would say when I was in my 20s, that I absolutely loved, was my favorite, favorite job in the world. But I worked for an airline as a sales manager, and that particular airline flew down to Australia and all throughout the South Pacific, and they still do. They're still in existence today, 80 years later, um, after their inception. And um, just love communicating and talking with the Aborigine people because they have this deep, deep wisdom about life and earth and society and and it's like where do you guys get this information because you live way out here in the middle of the sticks nowhere but you have this information and this wisdom that's so profound that it can transcend anything tell me about um your your work and your studies or your ceremonial experiences with the aborigine elders and and what you think um, is a message that you could share with the listeners today um, that emanates from them. It's, you know, the biggest lesson I got from hanging out with Aborigine elders was listen to your mother. Listen to the earth. Listen to the essence of your own soul. Your mind is going to play tricks on you. Your body is going to play tricks on you. But your soul, your essence, your heart will not. Your intuition doesn't lie to you. And if you could get all those other voices to quiet down just enough to hear the essence of your soul, your heart's longing speak, whisper to you, then you're going to be guided by not only your own intuition, but yourself, but your connection to the universal energy. Wow. That's deep. Um, And that's so true. I mean, how many times have, you know, your intuition or your gut or whatever you want to call it has spoken to you and told you to do or not to do something and you discounted the information only to be sorry later? You know, I I do believe that when we get that information, whether, um, and I do believe it's divinely descended down into us, um, that it is the true information, it is the true reality, it's the true factual stuff that we need to pay attention to, and particularly like with regards to Mother Earth and taking care of Earth and, you know, um, healing the planet, so to speak. There's so many things that we receive on a day-to-day basis that we just kind of discount off because our mind tells us that's not important. 
but when you tap into your gut, your heart, your intuitive connected self that's connected to the divine, um, that information you will it will be loud and clear and you, you just can't ignore it. Your mind will try to tell you to ignore it, but you just can't. And so I think that's some beautiful information that you shared because I think a lot of times we discount it and think it's all in our mind, but it really isn't. It's really all in our heart and gut, and it's divinely descended. So you guys out there listening, if you ever have thoughts that are intuitive or just seem to be so surreal to you and you, you're thinking about discounting them, I, I'm here to tell you that, as Greg would say, do not do that. Pay attention to that. That is the most profound information that you need to pay attention to. And I know when I was working as an emergency room trauma nurse, I always went by, I'm very intuitive anyways, but I always went by my gut feeling when I was looking at a patient, always, because it was that time that um, I went with my gut feeling that that patient would be the most sickest, the most critical, the most um, in danger of losing their life. And and so it never, ever steered me wrong. And, And so you guys out there listening, if you take nothing else from this show today, you will take that information and let it simmer and stew and man- and marinate in your mind and, and allow that part of you to be in touch and, be- and come full forth. Now, this is great because Greg shared this information about the Aborigine elders and wisdom um, that they bestowed upon him. And so I want to transcend now into, um, you know, his work with um, the inner journey. Can you... Can you explain to the listeners exactly what that means and what, yeah, what that means? Well, it's the the truth is most people are looking for exterior validation. They're looking for things from the outside to show them that they are in air quotation marks right or on the correct path or have, you know, or are lovely or are even lovable. And the truth of that matter is, until you take that inner journey and balance your interior reality with your exterior reality, there's always going to be something out of sync. And the more we could focus on being gratified, appreciative, and forgiving of self, the more that we can take that out into the world and recognize all the beauty, all the myriad of different presents and gorgeous gifts that are being laid out in front of us in every single moment. And that is the drive to be present here and now. And I know I just put a lot of things out there. It's basically gratitude, forgiveness, and presence are the main, main core to any journey, whether it's an inner journey or an outer journey, if you want to experience that through happiness. So now... What would you say to those individuals, and I I hear you loud and clear, um, but what would you say to those individuals that are beginning to delve into their inner aspects of their being, their mind, their body, their soul, their spirit, and uh, are having some difficulties with forgiveness? That's a hard one for people. I know it's it's hard for me at times. I'm still learning. I'm still in you know an evolving soul, so to speak. Everything else, I can you know pretty much um, you know I can pretty much go along with it and accept it and, and let it be how it how it truly is. But forgiveness over the years of my you know five plus decades. Um, <laughs> has been something that I've struggled with, and I know I'm not the only one out there. Um, And I know for me to get to a point where I'm on a good path on my journey, so to speak, I need to incorporate or learn that aspect um, to make my inner journey just a little bit more beautiful. What would you say to people like us that have a problem um, with forgiveness? And and, and, in context, not so much with knowing that you need to forgive the person, but just the whole concept of how does someone actually go about doing that or discovering that they can do it and it and it can be really beneficial and beautiful for them? What a great question. Thank you very much for that. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I just I got you on I got you here, Greg. I, oh no, I it's a great, know, great question. And I'm gonna start by illustrating this as though we're actually two different individuals that it's okay. not only myself but 
forgiving and holding anger for another person, there's this saying that I love. Being angry at somebody else and holding on to that or not forgiving somebody else and holding on to that is like drinking poison expecting the other person to get ill. The point of that is that all we're doing is taking a backpack, filling it full of rocks, and then carrying that around. Everything that we're unwilling to forgive another or ourselves for is one more piece of weight that we're burdening our own lives down with. And the only key is forgiveness. It's I'm asking, I'm begging to allow myself to release my obligation to beat myself up. You know, will I let go of this or is there something that I feel like I must flagellate myself with? Is there something I have to beat myself up over? And to me, that's just so completely unnecessary. There is a Hawaiian prayer called, I'm, and I always butcher this, so bear with me, <laughs> Hoponopo, Hoponoponono. And like I said, I butcher the way that that is. And what it means is it's a prayer, essentially, that says, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, I love you. And if you could oh. live just those words as a mantra over and over and over, then you are going to be so much better off. And the idea of forgiveness is, all right, have a dialogue with yourself. How do I do it? So what am I getting out of carrying that around? And most people will say nothing. That's a lie. You're actually getting something out of carrying that around. Otherwise, you wouldn't, get, you wouldn't do it any longer. And so if you go to that thing that you're getting, the gift in it doesn't have to be translated to you in a way that's burdensome or icky or horrible. But if you can discover, I'm carrying this around because it makes me feel safe. Okay, guess what? Maybe there's other ways to feel safe and that are less burdensome and more fluid and more gratifying in your life. Does that make sense so far? Oh, beautiful, because you gave that example of, you know, why someone might be carrying it around. Can you just repeat um, for me one more time the four things you said with regards to forgiveness, um, with regards to the Hawaiian prayer? Because I'm I'm writing that down, and I'm going to stick that on my desk, and I'm going to put it on the um, the radio show's webpage, because I think it's very, very profound with regards to, uh, you know, just us living our lives in a much better better place yeah i agree i'm telling you if if i said this every day and i'll I'll be honest i don't and if if our listeners did and just said it said okay i'm going to make a dedication to say this three to five times a day i guarantee the quality of their life will dramatically change immediately and i mean immediately and those four different phrases are i am sorry Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. Wow. And most people think we're talking to somebody else first. The truth is, you ask the way to forgiveness, if we say those words to ourselves, if we are grateful, if we're forgiving, if we're loving to ourselves, that emanates out. It flows out of us like like a burst, like a sunburst, it's, and it radiates and it warms us gorgeously. Yeah, it does. I mean, just when I heard you say that, I've never heard anyone, you know, say that. And me being a person that, um, you know, kind of has issues with forgiveness. And, and I like the example you share. What, you know, why are you holding it? It makes you feel safe. It makes you feel whatever. Um, you know, I'm like, dang, the, the bells, are going, bells and whistles are going off in my head. Um, because it so resonates, and then to have this be- these beautiful, simple four little phrases to say three to five times per day, that's going to help me have a much smoother path as I travel down my path to bliss is phenomenal. You guys out there listening, this is a golden nugget that you can begin to use immediate beyond the other stuff that Greg has given so far. This, my friends, will definitely help or a or I would say help to reduce or completely eliminate any stress that you have behind forgiveness. And they are 
I am sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. And I love you. And just four simple phrases, but so profound and so beneficial to all aspects of our life. I'm telling you, it will have an immediate and profound effect. And that leads me, if you don't mind, to one other story. This is going to sound like some bad kind of joke, but (laughs) there's a place in Southern California called the Magic Castle. It's this big castle where they there. Tons of magicians all over the place. Well, one day... Yeah, I've been there. It's a cool place. I've, I've it is a very, there. very cool place. Yeah, I was cool. fortunate enough to be there with a rabbi, a medicine man, the oh. chief of a tribe, and a, a high priest of the Ifa tribe from Yorba. And that man, the high priest from the Ifa tribe, as we were talking, stood up, And he talked about his own philosophy. He said, every five minutes you should say thank you, God. Thank you, God. And when he did that, it hit me like a bolt of lightning. And I went, all right, let me just see if I could do that for two days straight. Every five minutes, as conscious as I can, you know, not not setting a clock, not being a pain, not being some kind of you know, disciplinarian about it, but as much as my conscience could remember, every five minutes for two days, two single days, just say, thank you, God. And I did that, and just being filled with that kind of gratitude made me release all those things. If I fill myself up with gratitude, I don't have room for the ick and the yuck and the the negative feelings, the feelings that aren't of service to me. And it's another one of those simple, profound, profound moments. Because this is one of those things that I get from working with indigenous elders that I cannot find as easily or readily in urban society. The truth is simple. The truth is always simple. If it's complicated, that means that there's something that is buried under something else, but that's not the ultimate truth. Wow. I love that. So um, with regards to doing this for two days, you know, and, and you guys, the Magic Castle is uh, it's a, it's a very magical place. How appropriate to be talking about this in October, but um, it's, it's a, I went there when I was young and wild in my early 20s, and uh, it, it was just so much fun. It was just phenomenal, and, 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 you know, to be there with the kind of people that you were there with, experiencing this, this magical, illusionary stuff, and having, you know, the um, the elder tell you about, you know, er, you know, just every five minutes to say, thank you, God, and realizing that when you're in – a stream of gratitude and positivity, there's no room for not being grateful and negative energy because you don't, it, it, there's no room for it to come in because you're in this, this place of, you know, gratitude. It's like me wearing my five inch heels. You know, when I'm wearing my five inch heels and I'm strutting down the street, there's nobody that can't tell me that I'm not, that I'm not looking good. There's nothing in, you know, getting in the way of that. And, and that's what that, you know, gratitude saying that, um, you know, thank you, God, did for you. Now, I want to know what happened and why did you stop? Oh, you know, as with everything, I will do it (laughs) on a semi-regular basis and it becomes integrated. And you're right. There is no reason to stop. And as a matter of fact, if it just became a normal part of my day every single day, I guarantee things would shift dramatically. Always, and over, and over, and over. You know, that leads me to something else that I, that a lot of people don't understand. A lot of people think that big rock, that boulder, that obstacle on your path is blocking your path. The truth is, that big block, that big boulder is your path. That that's not laid here in order to punish you. That's not laid here in order for you to be beaten down or oppressed or or any kind of negative energy. What it is, 
in my understanding, is if you ask for peace, if you ask for happiness, the universe isn't going to go wave a magic wand and go poof. Here's peace. Here's happiness. Actually, instead, what it's going to do is provide you the opportunity to look at every single thing within you, in your own inner journey, that is your obstacle internally to peace, to happiness, to love, and give you an opportunity to address it and to incorporate it and to make friends with it. And then, therefore, instead of somebody giving you something, it's a lot like that old parable about give a man a fish, then he eats for a day. Teach a man how to fish, he eats for life. Well, if you allow, if the universe allows us to address and resolve our own internal obstacles, uh, gives us the opportunity for that, then what we have is true peace, true love, true happiness. Because it's ours. Nobody else gave it to us. We discovered it on our own with the help of the universe. Wow, that is absolutely beautiful. You guys, Greg is just, he's just hes just doing it. I knew he would hit a grand slam um, with this information. And, and, again, what he's saying and what he's sharing is seems so simplex and so very easy, and that's because the simplex and easy things are what really work. It's when they be complex and complicated due to man having to make it difficult that um, – it, they don't they don't work and um and just by doing something so easy and as he and he said that big rock in our path if we took the attitude of saying oh god i have this this huge challenge or you know whatever the case may be, i have this huge boulder on my path i have this beautiful path but i can't get i've got this huge freaking boulder you know if we just said thank you god i bet I bet that that boulder begins to melt away and melt down each time you say thank you, God. And I am guilty of getting in um, challenges in my life and think, and, and I do sometimes, I'm just human, like all of you, you know, why is this happening to me? I, you know, I'm a good person. I try to do good. You know, what the heck? Blah, 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 blah. You know, poor me, blah, 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 blah. And then it's like when I release that and just let it go and and let me be tied to the challenge of why it's happening, that it is released, and then the path becomes so much more fluid, you know, so much more beautiful. And and then I look back and say, oh, well, you know, I guess I was supposed to get this from that particular challenge or that particular boulder. But I bet you if I started saying, thank you, God, um, the boulders, and my on my path would become a lot easier to get rid of versus me trying to fight and and plow through and do it my way. Um, so thank you for sharing sharing that. Now give us some more goods with regards to the inner journey because this stuff is like it's so profound, it's so complex, and it's something that we all can do every day, every five minutes, every two minutes, every hour, whatever you choose to do. But it's something that you can incorporate into your life to make your life so much better. So, Greg, share some more of your words of wisdom with regards to our inner journeys um, wow. that we're so, all here to. There Again, I'm going to just go back to the fact that there's no right way, there's no wrong way. And as a matter of fact, the concepts of right and wrong are actually fallacies. There is no right, there is no wrong. All there is is light and shadow. And that doesn't mean light is good and shadow is bad. It means that shadow is just a different kind of energy and often we haven't figured out to how to employ it to our own benefit. Without the darkness, there are no stars up in the sky. We can't see them in the light. There are so mm-hmm. many more things to access through our shadow that sometimes can't be accessed through our light. And so everything is here for us in this moment, in this way. When we talk about inner journey, what I do is you can go to my website, which is gregfriedman.com, and we're setting up journeys all over the world. We do coaching. We do guidance one-on-one in workshops and groups, all kinds of different ways that we express our ability to be of service. Or if you listen to our radio program, Inner Journey with Greg Friedman, what we do 
is expose, introduce, illustrate all kinds of different healers and shaman and medicine men and artists, people of service of all kinds of different sorts, similar to what you do, pretty much parallel to what you do. And the reason we do this is because we're not dictating to you, this is what you should do, or this is the right way and this is the wrong way. What we're doing instead is saying, here's a whole bunch of paths, and what we want you to do, if you'd like, and only if you'd like, is to try this on. If it fits, then that's groovy. And if it doesn't, then nobody's the worse for wear. Nobody's going to say, oh, you should have made that fit. Nobody wants you to wear an outfit that's out of style or itchy or not your color (laughs) or just is not your thing for whatever reason. All we want you to do is maybe see what we suggest. Maybe try it on if that even feels good, and then do what you will with it, because it is your journey. It's your power. It's your pathway. It's not mine, and all I'm doing is doing my best to illuminate and illustrate different possibilities. You know, you again, you just you're sharing so much wisdom and, and so much profound, beneficial information. I really liked how you said um, with regards to the stars in the sky, if there was no darkness, we would not be able to see the light from the stars. Um, And how you also said that with regards to shadow and light, everyone knows that too much shadow could not be, you know, is not good and too much light. We can burn up in too much light. So there's there's a semblance, there's a balance there. And we can't have one without the other. You can't have, you can't learn to appreciate the darkness if you don't have the light. And you can't learn to appreciate the light if you don't have the darkness. And the, the again, the example was, you know, the sky. If there's, if there's no darkness, we can't see the beautiful, the beautiful stars. And if you ever sit down or lay down on the ground at night, especially particularly if you're not in like San Francisco or San Jose or L.A., you know, out in the vast wilderness somewhere, and you lay down on the ground and you connect your body with earth and you look up into the sky, the stars you see are so brilliant and so bright and so profound. And it just gives what you said just gives a whole new meaning to that because um, in order to appreciate whether the darkness or the light, you have to appreciate the other aspect. And I think that just goes for saying with what happens in our life, you know, uh, whether you have challenges or you don't have challenges, whatever the case may be, you just have to learn to accept and appreciate. And as, again, as a wise um, elder told you, you know, say thank you, God, because um, that gratitude puts you in such a much better place for the reception of the positive and beautiful benefits that come from what you may be going through at that moment in time. And with regards to Greg, you guys, I'm definitely going to let – him share with you, you know, how you can connect with him and and possibly explore your own inner journey. Again, he 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 says everybody has their own journey. It's just he's here to help you solidify and possibly awaken to what your true own inner journey may be and it may not be like what his is it may be completely different but it's your unique journey and it's something that you are here and he's willing to help show you uh how to embrace your own inner journey so that you can become a phenomenally much better person tomorrow than you are today and so um with regards to that greg Um, there was something else I wanted to ask you with regards to, um, you know, the guests and the people that you've had on your show. Um, You know, you've had some wonderful and very, very um, wise people on your show, and um, Don Miguel Ruiz Jr. is one that comes to mind. Can you just share with the listeners a favorite quote maybe that he said to you that kind of helped you uh, that you embraced and helps has helped you transcend as you travel down your own inner journey here on this wonderful earth. You know, instead of giving a quote, if you don't mind, I'm going to talk to you about the man himself. 
Because Go ahead on. more than what he says, when he came into the station, his energy was pervasive. He filled the room with joy and laughter and giggles and happiness just because of the energy that emanates from him. He radiates all of that. What I have found in almost every enlightened person is they laugh a lot. They giggle a lot. They enjoy themselves. They enjoy the world around them. It tickles them. And when he walked into a room, that's exactly what I felt from him. The world, in any moment, whatever world he was in, whatever room he was in, it just tickled him, and it gave him great joy. And I know that sometimes people hear about that and they go, well, he must be a little loony. No, the truth is he just let go of anything that wasn't tickling him and therefore was able to really embrace the joy in this very moment. Right here, right now, each one of us, every single one of us has the opportunity to embrace that dark, heavy stuff that we're not forgiving ourselves for or the myriad, the tons of gifts that the universe is presenting for us. And most of it is just a slight prism shift, just a little shift in our attitude, a little shift in our energy can change our entire world. Wow. That was another grand slam. I mean, um, I always tell, try to tell people, you know, focus on the present moment, but so so often we get wrapped up in the past or what's going to happen next, and we really don't get to enjoy and embrace the present moment. And here you share this, you know, story about Don Miguel Ruiz Jr., who is living in the present moment and enjoying each and every present moment and, and exudes that with the joy and the laughter and the just energy, the positive, wonderful healing energy that emanates from him as he walks into a room. That is what I would say is truly living in the essence of, you know, embracing your inner journey. And and it's just phenomenal. Now, what would you say with regards to Doreen Virtual? Because I've seen her, um, I've talked to her. She's given me some profound words of wisdom and information from the angelic realm um, that I couldn't tap into, which was beautiful. And when I see her, I see her, I see her in essence, which I don't want to share with the listeners just yet because I want you to disseminate what your experience was with her and what would you share with the listeners with regards to a message or um, something you want to share that's going to help enlighten them today. Well, first of all, you got me incredibly curious as to what your perspective is and what your experience is. <laughs> well, that's what a good radio show host do. I'm we telling you, girl, did, you did right? it beautifully. Thank you. Okay, Doreen is beautiful. And I'm, when I say beautiful, I'm not talking about her physical beauty. I'm talking about her inner beauty. And because she has access to that beauty, she also has access to a universal energy. And she does what a lot of people are not so adept at. She listens. And she listens very, very well. And... There's an old first people saying or indigenous people saying that says, listen to the wind, it talks. Listen to the silence, it speaks. And listen to your heart, it knows. Doreen not only listens to all of those things, but because she allows for the quiet, she also allows herself to hear other people, see other people, to have a universal connection to the energy that is transcended, that is not of this earth, and that is more ethereal. How it comes to her, what works for her, and how you may interpret it is up to you. But the messages she brings back are those of love, support, peace, and validation that, in fact, We're groovy. We're lovely. We are absolutely terrific as we are imperfect and in process. Wow. You know, I would agree with you on that. And um, 
and would just say, if you guys out there haven't, you know, ever seen Don Miguel Ruiz Jr. or Doreen Virtual or any of the other um, phenomenally connected people out there with regards to the spiritual connection, you should, you know, check them out. I came across Doreen um, in my when I was in my 30s, and um, it was really interesting because when I saw her, I was at this conference and. I sat in the front row where nobody was sitting off to the side and, you know, she was speaking and they asked people to stand up and ask her questions and a bunch of people stood up that were in the center and, you know, off to the other side. No one stood up in the front row and here I am way off to the right in the front row sitting by myself and I stood up and, you know, you think no one's ever, they're not going to call on me because they're, every, all the people that stood up were right in front of her and she looks over at me and she she you know she she you know points to me and she says what's your question and I was like oh my god first of all <laughs> she saw me second of all she's asking me much of my question and third of all my mind went completely blank but I asked her a question and I in and, in and, and I told her that I you know have been communicating with the angels since I was a little little girl and it kind of got depressed for various reasons religious kind of stuff but whatever um and she gave me this message that I hold true, that holds true for me today. And she says that um, I'm always surrounded by, you know, angels. I, I am a special person. And no matter what I want to do in life, as long as it's positive and it emanates the beautiful energy that I had at that moment in time as she was speaking to me, I will always have enough money to do whatever it is I want to do with regards to that. And I, you know, I'm like, oh, okay, you know, I took it. and But I never forgot what she says. And so here we are 20-something years later, and everything that she said with regards to that has been true. There are times when I wanted to do something and I didn't think I have enough money or, you know, how was I going to finance this or whatever the case may be, and the money would just manifest. And my angels are always talking to me. They're always giving me guidance. And so after that, I've seen Doreen a few times. And so when I see her, I don't see whether she had blonde hair or dark hair or whatever. You know, I don't see her in the context of how you see a person. I see her in the context of this very huge, beautiful angel here on earth living in a human's body and is giving us these profound messages that come from the angelic realm, the spiritual realm that we all need to hear and pay attention to. So I see her, she's just a big, beautiful being of light when she's on stage speaking or, you know, down on the, the level ground floor speaking, I see her that way. And I, and so after that first time, I've seen her several times and each time it's so funny, she calls on me, which is really interesting. And she remembers me, which is really odd because she sees thousands of people, but she always says, I remember you where I remember you from somewhere. I remember you. And then I'll tell her, she's like, Oh my gosh, yes, I remember. And it's just, to me, that's just so beautiful and her message. And she's always so full of light. So that's my story with regards to Doreen and how I see her. And I know I'm going off kind of track here. And oh, no, that was to, gorgeous. Just, it's my turn to say wow now. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. But, I mean, it's just, you know, it's, you never know what, what you and I share that someone may be having an awful day and hear something that you said or something that I'm sharing and completely we're able to completely transform their mindset and they go on and have a wonderful day, you know, or just wonderful things happen in their life or they understand that they have this big rock that they're dealing with, but it's okay. If they say thank you, God, or if they say I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, and I love you, that that rock or whatever it is may begin to melt away and they can have a profound, beautiful experience while they're here on earth. And with regard to that, Okay, I'm talking too much. Greg, please tell the <laughs> listeners. <laughs> you're never, as a host, you're never supposed to talk more than the guest. But please share You know what? I listeners. love listening to you. It's all good. <laughs> please share with the listeners how they can get in contact with you, get in more, more information about you, how they can connect with you. On Facebook, it's Inner Journey with Greg Friedman. That's also the name of the radio program. And online, on my website, it's my name, gregfriedman.com, and Friedman is spelled F-R-I-E-D-M-A-N, gregfriedman.com. 
Wow. So there you guys have it. If you want to connect with Greg, learn how he can help you with your own unique inner journey and know that it's okay that you have your own unique inner journey experience, you can go to Greg. Friedman.com. Also, he has a radio show, as he mentioned, and um, it is um, at kx935.com. And here is something. It's Laguna's only FM radio station. <laughs> yes, it is. So I know where he's at. He's down, ooh, in Laguna. I love it. I'm in Northern it's California. It's gorgeous we got down California. there in Laguna Beach, i got to tell you. It is. We got California covered out here. We got the West Coast covered. So if you like the phone with the West Coast people, you got a girl in Northern California. You got Greg down in Southern California. We will bring it to you all the time, correct and enlightening. And so with that, Greg, I want to thank you very much for being a guest on Blissful Living. You were absolutely phenomenal, and um, I really appreciate you and all that you do and all that you bring to the world to make this a better place. And to all of you guys out there listening, thank you for tuning in. Thank you to the sponsors, healthhealingwellnesscompany.com. Please go check them out. Please check out Greg at gregfriedman.com. And until next week, I'm wishing you all peace to your mind, wellness to your body, and tranquility to your spirit. This is the queen of feeling fabulous, Rochelle Marie Lossing, saying until next week, may your journey down your path to bliss be phenomenal. And goodbye for now, everyone. You can find out more about Rochelle on her website, Rochelle Lawson, R-O-C-H-E-L-E, Lawson, L-A-W-S-O-N, or at healthhealingwellness.com. Or just click on her websites from the webtalkradio.net page right in front of you. And, of course, you'll want to come right back here next week for another episode of Blissful Living. Thanks for joining us.